Good morning, everyone. Good Sunday morning. How is everybody today? You're ready for an amazing service? Okay, my name is Marty Hathaway. And on behalf of the co-pastors and the board of trustees, we welcome you to Colby Memorial Temple. To begin our service, my friend and yours, Rick, will come up and light the three candles, symbolizing the unity of body, mind, and spirit. Thank you, Rick. And at this time, we will ask you to please rise as you are able for our opening prayer and remain standing for our first hymn. Great Spirit, in the atmosphere of your creation, thankful are we that our souls have united in the power of love to support the communication between the two worlds from deep within our being. We send forth our heartfelt love to the unseen world. May they know that they will always dwell in our hearts and in our minds now and always, amen. And now we have the opening hymn by Reverend Deborah Gamberg, number 44, Higher Ground. Our regular vocalist is not here this morning, so please be patient with me. <laughs> I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay. Where doubts arise and fears dismay, though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live above the world, though angry darts at me are hurled. For faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But till I pray, till heaven I found, Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand on faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. All right, good job. And thanks for playing those tambourines loud. <laughs> oh, thank you, Reverend Deb. 
All right, located on the handout and in the front cover of the hymnal are our Declaration of Principles. Please join me in reciting these principles together. We believe in infinite intelligence. We believe that the phenomena of nature, both physical and spiritual, are the expressions of infinite intelligence. We affirm that a correct understanding of such expression and living in accordance therewith constitute true religion. We affirm that the existence and personal identity of the individual continue after the change called death. We affirm the communication with the so-called dead is a fact scientifically proven by the phenomenon of spiritualism. We believe that the highest morality is contained in the golden rule, whatsoever you would that others should do unto you, do ye also unto them. We affirm the moral responsibility of the individual and that he makes his own happiness or unhappiness as he obeys or disobeys nature's physical and spiritual laws. We affirm that the doorway to reformation is never closed against any human soul here or hereafter. We affirm that the precepts of prophecy and healing contained in the Bible are divine attributes proven through mediumship. The healing prayer is located in the back of your hymnal. Please recite it with me. Prayer for spiritual healing. I ask the great unseen healing force to remove all obstructions from my mind and body and to restore me to perfect health. I ask this in all sincerity and honesty and I will do my part. I ask this great unseen healing force to help both present and absent ones who are in need of help and to restore them to perfect health. I put my trust in the love and power of God. Amen. Now, for those of you who would wish to receive spiritual healing, please take a seat along the wall over here and go to the next available healer. And while the healers work, the rest of us will join in a guided meditation. At this time, relax your body and get comfortable in your seat. Clear your laps, placing your hands loosely with palms up or palms down. Whatever is comfortable to you is what is best for you. If you wish, close your eyes. Your breath is the anchor throughout this meditation. While you focus softly upon the words, you are allowing gentle tuning of your vibration to the frequency of infinite intelligence, God, source, deeply breathe in and breathe out. Be easy as you find the rhythm of your body. Enjoy long, deep breaths in and out as you listen to my voice. Deeply 
breathe in and breathe out. It is not necessary that you concentrate. There's nothing you need to remember. You are safe and at peace. There is no one that needs you and nowhere for you to be but here and in the now. Notice that your body is feeling heavier and heavier, almost as if you are a sponge soaked in water, sinking deeply into the support beneath you. Heavy and relaxed, your mind is quiet and still. Breathe and enjoy. Deeply breathe in and breathe out to relax. You are an extension of infinite intelligence, God, source, an extension of non-physical source energy. And you have come into this existence with great anticipation and eagerness. Your intention was to explore Earth's perfectly balanced contrast with the sole purpose of moving life beyond what it has been before for you. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. In this moment of both time and space, you are exactly where you intended to be. And the infinite intelligence, source, God within you is so very pleased. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. Your life continually calls for expansion through you and all of life benefits from the important part that we all individually play. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. As you relax and deeply breathe, you can appreciate the love that infinite intelligence, source, God feels for you in this moment of time.
appreciation for your physical world, for all of its diversity, and for the stream of never-ending desires you continually have. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. Before your birth into this physical body, you understood the importance of contrasting diversity on planet Earth. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. You jumped in eagerly to explore the variety and enjoy the expansion you knew would be called through you. Your life is unlimited in every respect, enjoying absolute continuing abundance, enjoying perfect well-being. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. Your life is supposed to feel good to you. For there is nothing you cannot be, do, or have. You have deliberately chosen it as the platform from which so much more will flow. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. The appreciation that infinite intelligence, source, God, feels for you never-endingly will wrap you in a warm blanket of worthiness if you allow it to be. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. Your life is serving you well and is providing the basis of expansion exactly as you knew it would be when you decided to come into this existence. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. a conscious awareness 
of how it all works. Everything is always working out for you. Everything is always working out for you. Even when it doesn't look like it or seem to be, everything is always working out. Infinite intelligence, source, God, is always listening to your desires and your dreams, allowing for your abundant well-being. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. You feel expansive, eager, and frisky, and are desiring more and more with every new discovery and each new place you stand. The expansive feeling of more continues to call you and refresh you. Your world is continually expanding and steadily growing and refreshing while finding balance every step of the way. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. Well-being is the dominant basis of all reason of existence, of the universe, of the physical planet Earth, on which you now exist. Our magnificent world is eternally tied to the steady rhythm of well-being at its core. And the same is true for you. As you relax, and refresh, releasing resistance as you grieve, you will discover the balancing rhythm of infinite intelligence, source, God. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. Be easy about your life and feel the appreciation of who you are. With the goal of happiness and joy, you allow wonderful things to flow naturally to you. Deeply breathe in and breathe out.
as you relax into the law-based premise of these words, any resistance you have found along your physical path will be released. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. As you listen to these words and remember who you are, you will discover your actual vibrational patterns of complete well-being. You are worthy. Each day, you will find more clarity, more stamina, more eagerness. Each day, you will remember who you are and why you have come into this existence. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. Your life is supposed to feel good to you and you are meant to feel happiness and joy in your life. And you are meant to satisfy your desires and your dreams. Deeply breathe in and breathe out. You are doing extremely well. The well-being that you seek is flowing right to you right now. Relax and enjoy the feeling. Feel appreciation for what is and eagerness for what is coming. Having complete trust in life, you represent the momentum of allowing a deliberate discovery of things that have been asked of for a long time. There is nothing you cannot be, do, or have attracting the essence of whatever pleases you. We are all co-creators within a diverse universe. All that is, is benefiting from your existence. There is great love for you. You are never alone. There is great love for you all around you always. And now, when you are ready, breathing in and breathing out, open your eyes. Welcome back, lovely ones. Welcome to Colby Memorial Temple. I hope that was all good for you. <laughs> I think it was. All right. Now, let me get back over here to my, my papers. If you have received healing resulting in a correction or improvement, please complete the yellow card in your hymnal and give it to the pastor in the back of the temple or mail the card to us. You may also place it in the collection plate. 
We'd like to thank our healers for sharing their gift of healing. Reverend Deborah Gretton Ganberg, Darlene McCormick, Daryl De Demerit, and Reverend Dr. Sheldon Ganberg. Thank you, healers. We appreciate you. All right. Now, please stand for our next hymn, How Great Thou Art, on the back page of your hymnals. Lord, my God, when I thought of wonder and sin across the world thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, throughout the universe is laid. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When through the wood and forest play thy wonder, and hear the bird sing sweetly in the tree. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and see the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul. Job. <laughs> right. Thank you, Reverend Deb. That was lovely. All right. And now it's time for our guest speaker. You're in for a treat today. Reverend Stephen Atkins is an ordained minister. He is a certified healer and certified medium by the Casadega Spiritualist Camp. Reverend Stephen Adkins has demonstrated throughout the US and UK professionally over the past 10 years. And now it is my honor and my pleasure to introduce to you Reverend Stephen Adkins. Good morning. I'm going to speak a little bit today, a little history about how long I've been here, which is not to diminish anybody else's effort of being here, but I've seen a lot go on here. There might be five or six people still here that were here when I first came out here as far as mediums and healers and that kind of thing goes. I don't know where a lot of them are at. I'm sure some of them have passed to the infinite side of life, but it's just interesting to see all of the differences that have gone on and see people come up and see the expressions that go on. Last week, Marty Hathaway, the chairperson, received her, her uh, gave, got a chance to do her first lecture since she was certified. And she gave me a little bit of a glowing report for helping her out in the beginning. <clears throat> And I, I always remember that because every student I've ever taught, 
I learn something about my own mediumship when I teach it because the spirit inspires me to speak to people in the way that they need to hear it. And I get something out of it myself. I can't exactly say uh, spirit made me say it, so I'm not responsible for it because you are responsible for everything you say, everything you do, every time you do it, no matter why you do it. That's personal responsibility. It's the cornerstone of the spiritualist faith. When I first came out here, compared to where I'm at now, I had no idea the journey that it was going to take me on the people that I would meet, the awakenings I would have about my own life, the broadening of my perspective about the world around me. But at the same time, you get into this back and forth conflict with your own conscious mind between you and your spiritual mind. I began to endeavor to communicate with my own spiritual being as much as the spirits outside me. They call them disincarnate spirits. That's kind of a a hard sounding word because that's most you mostly hear that in horror movies, disincarnate beings, but disincarnate just means separate from you with its own identity. So as I learn more about that, learn more about the spirit world around me, I, I, I really became more personal. I became more intimate with my understanding of the spirit energy. And it was a, a great awakening for me to realize that I didn't have to beseech something to come to me i didn't have to pray for it it was constantly there it's a vibration rate within our bodies the eternal being that we are constantly vibrates that energy and constantly connects to the greater source around us if we can take time and feel comfortable feel a comfort with our own mind and our own energy our own eternal energy we can feel the, the presence all around us there's something I'm going to read out of my 24 hour a day book here that was, you hear, hear a lot of these cliched sayings, but this one kind of explains it pretty good. And in today's world, with all the difficulties we see going on, all of the upheaval, all of the doomsday predictions from the right and the left of the perspective, all of everything that, that people's throwing at us. When I look back to the 60s, I grew up in the 60s. And I'm sure that my parents thought the same thing about society back then, that it was becoming turned up on its ear, that we're going to lose our freedoms and everything's gone to pot in a handbasket. I'm sure they felt the same way when the new wave came in with that. And that's what's going on now is we, you, you've heard the song, Song of Aquarius, the dawning of the new age. Well, new ages aren't always the most pleasant when they come in because they have to push something out of the way to get here. And that's what's going on now is you're seeing a pushing out of the old ways and a lot of people digging their feet in, trying to hang on to the old ways, not want to let the new way come in and, and replace them. So with this, with that in mind, I'm going to read this little saying here. All is fundamentally well. That does not mean that all is well on the surface of things, but it does mean that God's in his heaven and that he has a purpose for the world, which will eventually work out when enough human beings are willing to follow the way. Wearing the world as a loose garment means not being upset by the surface wrongness of things, but feeling deeply secure in the fundamental goodness and purpose of the universe. And that's another thing that spiritualists believe is that the human nature is to be good, not bad, not evil or anything of that nature but again you, you you you're inundated with the media with with the public broadcasts and things about all the crime going on all the difficulty going on everything to scare you when in actuality the crime that goes on is is less than one percent of the population commits crime and and you begin to think oh my god it's my neighbor it's everybody around me you know it's I got to go buy me a gun and make sure I'm safe, you know, it, because that's what you're being inundated with. And the conscious mind latches on to that and repeats it over and over again to you because it's based on instincts and it wants to be safe. It wants to control the environment around it where the spiritual mind is more dynamic and more active. 
when at, when Andrew Jackson Davis was asked, uh, he's one of our great pioneers of, of spiritualism. When he was asked where spirit existed at, he said, "In the smallest particles of exist in the space between the smallest particles of existence, is where the spirit exists at." And he said, "It's called a field." That was long before the atom was known, and there was and could, anybody had even seen that. And what do we call the space between the particles of an atom today? A field. So spirit influences right down at that level within us, within the world around us. It's constantly moving things, at, like the book just said, in a preordained fashion towards an ultimate purpose. Now, we have the illusion of free will where we, we don't have to go in that direction if we don't want to. But it's such a large expanse of energy moving that even though we think we're moving this way, the major part of it's still moving in purpose of direction. So what we need to do is to feel that spirit presence within us. And over the years, first I was taught to meditate, bring the spirit influence in from the outside. And as I evolved through my own teachings and through the teachings of people overseas and broader teachings, you began to feel that vibration rate within your own body and you began to feel a comfort with it. Now that doesn't mean I don't get upset when things happen or I'm not worried about money when money starts running out, but you have this underlying feeling of purpose. You have an underlying feeling of stability about your life with that spirit presence in there. And that's what you, that's what really needs to be done for people to progress forward with spiritual development. Too many times, too many systems I've seen, and I've been involved in a lot of organizations, taught a lot of places, and a lot of what people teach, everybody wants to be a medium, everybody wants to be a healer, nobody just wants to be a spiritual being in their own life. And that's what's missing is the person being taught how to spiritually evolve themselves. Because what happens with that kind of service work is if you're always giving people advice, you never have to look at your own life and do, do any adjustment for yourself. Well, I'm helping these people. They're getting better. So I must be all right. you know. And that's just not the case. You have to look inside yourself. And that's an old cliched saying too. Because you hear the yogis say, everything in this world's an illusion, which I never agreed with, because it's pretty real to me. And I finally heard an explanation that put that into perspective. And it was that it's not that it's an illusion, it's just not eternal. And that's what they mean by it's an illusion. It's temporary. It's a temporary existence, not a permanent existence of, of spirit. As I, as I move again through my own development, each day seems to be like a small awakening to me. Keep referring to yourself. Keep trying to feel that comfort within as you start the day, even if it goes to pot within an hour. So the first time you get on I-4 and try to go to work, that's pretty challenging. It's, you know, you kind of lose your calm real quick with that. But again, you begin to feel this permanence within you when you feel that spirit and breathe into that and relax into it. And it's, it, that's what you need to try to do is to feel that, the presence of spirit in everything. That permanence, according to Andrew Jackson Davis, is at the atomic level. And we have that resonance. It, it resonates like a frequency back and forth to us, to our own eternal being. And that's what we need to try to feel is that underlying vibration, that underlying harmony that's constantly there. It's not something we have to try to bring in. It's something we have to just slow down enough to pay attention to. A lot of people think that we make up stuff with spiritualism because we don't have the Bible. But there is a a book like this called the National Spiritualist Association Manual. And it's it's a quite a comprehensive book. 
And it was actually written in 1911, the original parts of it. And I've got something I want to read out of there. Through suggestion or control of the mind, the most wonderful results can be achieved in the destiny of the human race, morally, intellectually, and physically. Through the process of evolution, from the remote cycles of time, cosmic consciousness has been struggling upward and finally produced an animal, man, who has a rapidly developing brain. He is just entering upon the existence of a newly developed organ in his brain. A new era is just opening up for the human family, the era of mind. Every man is what he thinks. Thought messages, thought messages of love sent in any direction come back with sweet echoes. They are light reflected and reflected in a series of mirrors. Now, this is something that was written in 1911. It's not new age. It's not anything brand new. So these visionaries wrote this kind of thing. And when you read those kinds of things and hear those words, your mind sinks into them and broadens what it thinks about the world around you. You go, wow, that was pretty neat. And your mind begins to vibrate at a different rate. And that's what most of this development is about. It's moving your mind beyond the development of where it's at. Spiritualism does taught me most of that. Doesn't mean that's the only way to becoming enlightened or, or in some fashion awakened. And you don't have to come to church here every day to do that. You don't have to go to classes to do that. But you have to take time to feel your own body, to just, just sit there and feel that in the morning, like when you're getting ready to drink your first cup of coffee. Just do what's called rhythmic breathing, just a normal breath of life, just a, well, just a static type breathing, and just feel the world around you. Just You don't have to put your mind out there or quiet your mind or anything. Just feel the vibration rate of the energy around you. And get used to doing that because that'll carry with you throughout the day. You'll be able to feel what's around you and not be shocked by the immediacy of the, of the physical world so much. And again, I, I have, as you get older, unfortunately, you go through a lot of physical ailments and things. And you really begin to find out how much you've been paying attention to your life when you have a real difficult physical ailment occur to you, because suddenly you realize you haven't been paying that good of attention to your life and your mind shifts and focuses in on that. And you can be inspired about what to do and how to do it with those things. I'm not saying doctors are quacks or anything, but they go by cases. They go by what's happened before. They don't go by the individual themselves. And you and the God of your understanding determine what happens to you, not the doctors, not the hospitals. There are certain indispensable lessons that we have to go through in our lives that we can't get around and, and we have to go through because we progress not just through happy and nice things, but difficult things tend to make us grow to a greater understanding about ourselves too. With all of these things in mind, I would ask you just to begin to sit quiet in the, at least in the mornings for about 10 minutes. You don't have to do a huge amount of meditation. I don't, I'm not saying take up meditation classes and sit there for 30 or 40 minutes uh, chanting Om or listening to music. Silence is better if you have a quiet neighborhood. You know, you, you can just sit there and feel who you are. You have 100% of what you need to develop within your own mind, your own body, and the spirit realm inspiring it around you. I have really enjoyed the philosophy of spiritualism. I was raised a Roman Catholic for a while. It took me about two years of doing this before I realized that God wasn't going to get me for doing it. <laughs> and, yes. But it does have, it does teach you a more intimate understanding of the spirit realm around you. It gives you the ability to think on a personal relation, a personal note to the higher forces that are around you rather than praying unceasingly and, and trying to get them to grant you favors. You begin to feel that intimate relationship inside your own mind and your own body 
where you can get that message about you and about what's going on, where you can get that comfort of knowing that that's trusted, that you can trust that information and it's never can be taken away from you. That's the main benefit that I've gotten from my philosophy of what I do here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I always end my lectures at about 20 minutes. There was a one of the original pastors out here when I came out here was Marie Lilla. And I remember when she said, uh, she said, well, your lecture should be about 20 minutes. And we were in a platform class. And I said, well, she, I said, sometimes I'll go longer than that. She says, if you do that in my church, you'll only do it one time. You won't come back. So, <laughs> she was quite, quite the character. But that, that does give me a, a little bit of nostalgia to think back to all the people that used to be here, the people that used to work up in this platform here, all the people that have moved on and all the nice faces of people I see here now coming here, embracing it, and, and having your lives changed by it. And just to give you a little idea of a little slant on God's sense of humor, I'm going to tell you a little joke here. There was this pastor, and he had two loves. One was golf, and one was preaching the, the gospel. And he had this big mega church that he was head of. And one Sunday, he just got this unresist, irresistible itch to go play golf. He just couldn't stand it anymore. But he had to go way, way to a place where nobody knew him so he could get away with playing golf on Sunday. So his associate pastor took over and was doing the lecture and he's out there playing golf, just teeing up. He's feeling a little guilty, a little self-conscious. And he rears back, wham, three or 400 yard drive. And he goes, oh my gosh. He says, I can't believe that. So he gets up there and he's just, well, he's playing the game of his life, just bogeys and birdies and just, just tearing it up. So you go up to heaven and God and Michael the Archangel are up there. And Michael the Archangel says, aren't you going to punish him? He says, I got it under control. So they're watching and he goes on, plays some more. And at the end of the game, the 18th hole, he rears back and wails on that ball and makes a hole in one the last time. And Michael the Archangel says, what what are you doing? He says, I thought you was going to get you. You were going to punish him. God looks at him and says, who's he going to tell? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Steve. All right. During this musical interlude, we will be passing the basket and we thank you in advance for your generosity. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's my cue. <laughs> All right, I would like to offer a prayer for the offertories today. Infinite Spirit, please allow the generosity of all to be used for the greater good and expansion of the camp. Please allow us to honor the 130 years of history that has deepened the spiritual connection felt by so many around the world. And we thank you. Amen. Okay, it's time for announcements. It's announcement time. Okay, next Wednesday, which is March 27th, our message bearer will be Joy Sager. Next Sunday, March 31st, which is Easter Sunday. Wow, that's coming up pretty quick. Our guest speaker at our 1030 service is Reverend Diane Davis. And we also have a special sunrise service at 7.30 a.m. on Easter Sunday. And Reverend Judy Cooper will be speaking at that service. So get up early and come on out for that one. Guaranteed to be wonderful and inspiring. Every Sunday we have Adult Lyceum, also known as Adult Sunday School, from 10.30 to 10.15 a.m., in the Andrew Jackson Davis building, which is also better known as the bookstore, back behind the bookstore. Let's see, next Sunday, there will be no Lyceum due to having our Easter sunrise service. Now we have, uh, let's see, on this afternoon, we have a seminar going on by Reverend Dr. Philip DeLong. Philip DeLong. Let me get that out. And let me see here. It's from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the AJD building, Andrew Jackson Davis, where the bookstore is. And it is titled The Law of Sound and Silence. And it says here, discover your inner voice and self through the power of silence and meditation. Who are you? Be prepared to find yourself. If anybody's lost, come on over, you'll find yourself. It's $40 at the door, $35 for pre-registered. Um, maximum attendance is 40. And there will be no new member orientation this month. So if anybody was going to come to that this month, it will be going on next month. There is a donation jar by the door for anyone who would like to give a donation toward a new sound system for Colby Memorial Temple. The one we have is in desperate need of retirement. Yes, it is. All donations are greatly appreciated. You'll find that on the little table against the column with the white, white skirt on it. Okay, to participate in absentee healing, please, please print the name and the first initial of the last name of a loved one or friend or even a pet in our healing book, at the left corner of our Colby Temple, every Thursday morning, we have a healing meditation circle at 11 a.m. at the Andrew Jackson Davis Building, where all the names on the healing list are held in prayer. All are welcome to attend. It's very inspiring and very soul-soothing. Flyers for camp events are at the back of the temple. We have an activities calendar and a church bulletin. And they are sitting on the back counter as you exit. Please help yourself to one and pick one up for a friend if you'd like. Our website, casadega.org, also has the monthly information as well as all upcoming events. Please stand for the next hymn, number 70. 
Amazing Grace. And on the second uh, verse, uh, second line, instead of that saved a wretch like me, we'll say it saved a soul like me. Okay. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a soul like me. What once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. The hour I first believed. Through many dangers, thorns and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, Bright shining as the sun, leave no less days to sing God's praise than when we first began. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you, Reverend Deb. Let's see here. And now it's a very special part of our service. We now have for the message portion, I reintroduce to you Reverend Stephen Adkins. Usually I like to have a mic so I can walk around, but I guess no, this, is, this is what's here before me. So. Um, I do a demonstration style of mediumship and I ask you to confirm what I've said to you. You can be fair with me. I've dated before. I've been told no before. So right ahead and tell me no, but I want you to be fair with me. If I say they passed at 60 and they passed at 61, I'm going to ask you to give me that one. So just keep your mind open and be looking forward and outward. Yes, yes. Can you hear that? I don't think so. It's okay. I'll just go ahead and work without it. Let me go ahead and work without it. We need donations. <laughs> just saying. Here it always has a reason for things that happen like that. It teaches me something about myself. I'd like to go to the gentleman sitting right here with his hands in his lap. Yeah, you just looked around. Would you like me to work with you? Can you hear me okay? Okay. As I first touch in with you, I feel a man around you in spirit. And I feel a breathing difficulty with him, like a labored breathing. And I feel that he's related to you. It almost feels like brother to me. And he had that heavy breathing before he passed. He was uh, he was he, he he was in pretty good health most of the time, but for some reason this just came on him, and he just couldn't get back get it back right. Do you recognize somebody like this? 
What was that? I'm I'm working with this guy back here. Did, can you hear me? Did you hear what I just said? This reminds me of a time when I was doing a Wednesday night service. I kept talking to somebody and they couldn't hear and he kept moving closer and closer. And when he got up here and I said, I've got your sister. He says, I don't want to talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> are you able to hear me okay okay i had uh i had said that i felt a man around you in spirit with heavy breathing and he was having difficult breathing before he passed and it felt almost brother to me um had pretty good health most of the time until that happened to him do you understand this person Yes. Okay. Thank you. As I work more with him, he's coming back to you on a commonality of health because I just heard you cough a little bit. And that's what he's coming back on is that connection between the health vibration. And he just wants you to know that you're not going to go the way he did, that it's going to stabilize and stay fairly strong. But do your due diligence, you know, follow up with the people you need to follow up with. Don't just take my word for it. And Stop seeing your doctors. Um, something that he wants to show me that you guys used to do together. And there was a little bit of fishing that went on, but not a lot of it, because, you know, that was more just time to be spent with each other. And that um, he sees, you know, he just remembers those times and just wants you to go stand down by the water to get close to him if you want to feel him close to you because he'll remember that and it'll bring back that vibration rate. Uh, proof of ongoing intelligence, something he's seen you do in the last couple of weeks, just to prove that he's living in spirit and I'm not just reading memories. He sees you going through your closets and it's almost like you pulled out some kind of collection. I don't know if it was a coin collection or something like that, something that you haven't seen in a while. And you were just kind of going through your stuff and really being remembering the times. And somehow you remembered him a little bit with one of these. Like I said, it's something that folds out. I don't know if it's a coin collection or what. You understand what he's talking about here? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And he is around you and he does... You know, it's not like he's haunting you or anything, but it's the, it's like that vibration rate I was talking about. You just feel the comfort. You feel that presence. And when you feel that presence and you think he's around you, just say, thank you for being here. You know, just acknowledge that he's there because they have to practice with you. It's like they're trying to figure out a language to communicate with you from the other side. So just acknowledge that you feel him, acknowledge that he's there. And that'll make it get a little stronger in the future. I'll leave that with hope and good wishes. Something's coming back to me. So I always go to the guys in the audience and they say, go to some of the women, you know. <laughs> I guess guys are easy to read for guys. So where I'm trying to be drawn here. I'd like to go to the young lady right here with the dark hair sitting almost directly in front of me. Would, would you like me to work with you? Okay. Can you hear me okay? Thanks. As I touch in with you, I'm, I'm being, it's almost like I feel a grandfather stepping around you from the other side of life. Do you have a grandfather that's passed over? And as he steps close to you, um, it was almost like he didn't see you the last couple of years of his life, that you were, you know, you were much younger when you were around him. And that he he's touching back in on that note because there seems to be a change with your life, a change in your energy, like I was talking about. And he says that you need to remember the basis of where you come from. Don't be dragged too far off of what gave you comfort when you were younger. 
because right now you're in the midst of a strong change with your life and you have to take time and sort out what's yours and what's somebody else's, he says. So take your time. Remember the comfort you yeah. used to get sitting with him. And he said, if that comfort's not there with the people you're with, you don't need to be around them, is what he's telling me. He says he sees good things for you this coming next school year. It's almost like a transition for you from where you're at to where you're going. And then it's going to create a tremendous awakening within you. But again, realize the strength of who you are. You're everything you need to be by yourself. And he doesn't want to see you get dragged off and start putting on fashions and fads because you'll be guided by that inner spirit, just like I was talking about, to where you need to be. And as you move along that path, you'll become more and more comfortable with the life that's around you. And you'll be more in control of the life that's around you because you're moving through your life, not what somebody else wants you to do. And I know sometimes parents don't like to hear me tell young people that because they don't always tend to agree with what the young person wants to do. But you will be guided. I see a good strength with you. I see clearness in your face and in your eyes. And I see a good vibratory energy around you. Just don't let people take that away from you when you get in these upper levels of school because they tend to have been there and done that before. You know, so so don't and they played all the games that you're thinking about playing. That's what my dad used to tell me. I've already played all the games that you thought of, and some you haven't even thought of. So don't try to run them on me. But these people use it to their advantage. So feel safe, feel comfortable, pay attention to your own inner self, and don't be dragged off that center. Is what he's telling me. He's telling me that you're, you're a good average, not average, but middle of the ground student, like bees and stuff. You know, you're not, you're not exactly on a roll, but bees is good. Bees is good. He said, don't let anybody tell you, don't let anybody tell you that bees aren't good, he says. Because when you get, there's two different types of intelligence. One is analytical intelligence. And one is applying that intelligence to the world around you. You're better with applying it to the world around you than you are that the other type. So, and, and I know that when, when me and my sister, my sister had 180 IQ and she used to tell me all the time, she says, I got 180 IQ, but you're always gonna earn more money than me. You know, and, and that's because I had the applying type of intelligence. So understand who you are and what works for you and gather that into yourself and nobody can take it away from you. Proof of ongoing intelligence, something he's seen you do in the last couple of weeks to prove he's living, a living spirit, not just memories. Seems you were out with a couple of quote friends and something happened with an, another person and they were all building the person up and you're going, that's pretty stupid. You know, you, you kind of step back from it and said, that, that really, I don't really think that way about this at all. And it kind of turned you off a little bit and you just kind of backed out of the group. And that's what you need to do going forward. You understand what I'm talking about here? Okay, because that, that shows he's around you and he will help to inspire you. He's not going to haunt you or rattle your curtains or anything in the middle of the night, but he is going to work on that subliminal level, that energy of comfort with you. And that's what you need to do. Feel that energy of comfort. And I leave that with hope and good wishes. Thank you all. It's got to close now because I got another message service coming. Thank you, Reverend Steve. All right. We would like to remind everyone that we will have our afternoon message service here in the temple from 12 to 1230 or somewhere therein. 
A group of mediums and student mediums will be giving spirit greetings to as many individuals as they can reach during this message service. Everyone is very welcome to attend. We encourage you to visit our bookstore, which is open 1130 to 5 p.m. today and open Monday through Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Please rise for our closing hymn, number 203, let there be peace on earth and remain standing for our closing prayer. Thank you. Thank you. Each and let it be let it be the peace that was meant to be. With God, our Creator, children of our let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let each begin with me. Let us bring our own and let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth. And let it begin with me. <clears throat> and now may we go forth in the certainty of faith, in the knowledge of love, in the vision of hope, and in our going and being. May we be blessed with all good things on this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for attending today.